Hello viewers, my name is Ayodhya Jani Fouche and then welcome again to Great Father, Great Husband channel. I hope you've been enjoying all the topics we've been discussing for the past few weeks and months. This is to build a, a good home, make us uh, men a good husband and a good father to our family. Very important. Uh, if you have not subscribed yet to my channel, please, please subscribe now. Use the notification bell underneath and there uh, you get notification whenever I post a video. So today we'll be talking about something new. Uh, we are going to be looking at the Journey to Fatherhood series and the first topic we'll be looking at is life before baby number one. Uh, we'll be talking about five things to know as a husband as you prepare for baby number one. The first thing you need to know is be ready for surprises. Surprise! How do I mean? See, whenever you, you're dating your wife or spending time together, you can experience some things. But when you not have to live together under the same roof, then you gotta take off the max for each other's face. It's not like everyone anyone is pretending, but uh, because you not get to live under the same roof, you not get to know each other very well, and it will expose you to your wife, expose your wife to you. You get to know each other much better, and don't freak out. Don't freak out. Before I got married, I thought I was very patient. In fact, even my wife mentioned it then. But wait, when I got married, I knew my patient still needs a lot of work. Why? Because we now live under the same roof. It's different from the time where we just spend a few hours together and everybody, you know, part ways. We now live under the same house, sleep together, wake up together, do everything together. It's a different ballgame entirely. So when you have that mindset, it helps to, to, to really put things in place in the right way. So be ready for surprises. Things will change. Things will change. Sometimes you want things to be done in a particular way based on how you've been doing things before you got married. Trust me, when your wife comes in, you know, she might have a different perspective. It's not like you guys didn't talk about so many things, but there are some things you might not even remember to talk about. And the reason is because you guys have not lived together. So when you not live together, now that's not saying you should you should start living together before you get married. No. That will still help. See, to understand and know each other as a couple in marriage. It's a journey. It's not something that happens overnight. And every day, you'll be unveiling a new chapter. You'll be unveiling, especially for a woman. A woman unveil a new chapter. A, a, a woman unveil a, a new a new chapter all the time. When you think you, you have understood or known a woman perfectly, then you surprise a new chapter they're going to get for you. So we need to understand that surprises will come. But you need to manage everything that comes in. And the reason is because this marriage is not what you want to hold on for uh, a season, uh, for a few months. It's for life. You are getting into a lifetime commitment. So think about all these things before you get into the commitment of marriage. So be ready for surprises. Especially when, when your wife now is now pregnant. You have not had, had a wife that is pregnant before, so you and, and your wife is different from every other wife all around the world. So the way she will react, the way she will feel during pregnancy is not the way that people will feel. So be ready for surprises. Number two, spend time with each other. Remember myself and my wife got married. First thing we went to we went for our honeymoon, obviously. When we came back, we go to places together, we go to watch movies, we play games together, we have a date night that we put in our calendar. Not for anything, but the fact that we, we want to spend time together with each other, even before the kids start coming in. After the honeymoon, I think a couple of months later, we, we scheduled another trip. And as soon as we got to know that the baby number one will be coming, we went you know, somewhere again, spend a good time. It's not about wasting money, no. It's about investing. We are investing in the time we spend with each other because it, it really helps us to know each other better and be able to do things better. So spend time with each other. Take every opportunity. We don't do any opportunity. Sometimes we go to the store together. 
we shop together sometimes I'm, I'm, I'm going to cut my hair she's going to follow me you know so every opportunity because guess what when children start coming in things change completely and because things will change completely you now need to find a way to manage everything so that it, it will not become an issue within the family so know each other and it's, it's a continuous process knowing each other is a continuous process like i said it's not something that you do overnight no it's a continuous process you begin to know each other there are so many things that my wife saw in me recently and she was like oh wow i didn't know you do this so it's it's a journey and there's some things that I, I would do that that i probably didn't know i could do it that same way so getting to know each other is a journey and then we need to work on it the third thing you must know as a husband is be ready to work. Marriage is not, is not for a lazy man. Adam was hard working in the Garden of Eden. Adam was hard working. So be ready to work. Marriage is not for a lazy man. There is work to be done physically and spiritually. House chores. I wash the plate. I do the dishes. I cook the food. I clean the floor. I do the laundry. I do a lot. If I say I want to wait till baby no one comes before I do it, it's not possible. This is something I've been doing since I was I was a child, and I didn't stop. Even when I I, I had the opportunity of stopping them, uh, I could easily get people to, to to do all that for me. But I was still doing it by myself. I was doing it by myself because it's something I've been trained with. So get used to it. Start doing the chores. Yeah, I agreed. You have not been getting things right over time before. Okay, case closed. Start a new life. Start a new page. Start start afresh. Marriage is hard work. It is hard work. You need to work things out. You need to. Now, I won't use the word help your wife. No, you are not helping your wife. Whatever you do is your duty. Any man that opens their mouth and, and say they are helping their wife to to clean the kitchen, they are helping their wife to carry the baby. They are helping. No, you are not helping your wife. That's not the right word. You are doing your job. It's like you telling the CEO, CEO, I'm, I'm helping you to make sure that the company a report is very ready as an admin officer. No, it is your job. That's why you are being paid for. If you are not ready to do it, they're going to sack you. So when you married your wife, you took upon yourself the responsibility. Responsibility means responding to ability because you have the ability of doing those things. So you are supposed to respond to it by being able to do the work that is that is expected of you. I don't make my wife carry some heavy load, no, no. If I, I don't make her carry things if I'm there. I almost carry everything on my own. We move sometimes we go and then, you know, I didn't let her carry any box. I was not carrying most of the things. I was not carrying most of the things. I don't let my wife carry any heavy load. She's not a slave. She's a help mate. If I need her help, I call her. She will not do the job. She would help me in the areas I need help. She will not do the job. We need to understand this as men. Don't use your wife. Later on, after 20 years in marriage, you complain your wife is looking old. How will she look old after you have used her? A woman, you will meet her there. Manage her. Manage her. Manage her. Push her up. Package her. Do not use her. You know, don't just use and dump her. Use her perfectly. Manage her the right way. So, there is work to be done. There's work to be done. Help yourself. You're not here. Help yourself. It's your duty. It's your duty. You have there's so much work. You need to think, brainstorm, prepare for the future, you know, for the family, pray, being able to receive revelation for the family. Trust me, it is not easy, but you have to do it. With the grace of God, it is easy. You got to get this done to make your marriage, you know, stand firm, to make your marriage grow. You have to get this done. Marriage is hard work. If anybody tells you that marriage is is, is an easy work, it's a lie, it's hard work. Anyone that knows why you ask her. Most of the time I gotta wake up 3 30, 4 a.m. so that I could cover all the things I need to do before they all wake up. I wake them up at 5 and we have to do our devotion from 5 o'clock to 6 a.m. every morning. We do our morning devotion. It's so, it's, so, it's so much work. 
I need to pray, I need to, to get close to, close to God so that when my wife brings any situation to me, I'm able to, to interpret dreams, I'm able to give solutions without her going to any other person. There's so much work to be done. There's so much study I need to be done. Before we do morning devotion in the morning, the scripture we will read, I will have had to read them before. I will have to read them before. Most of the time, I sleep last. I'm the last person that sleeps. It is, it is not because I, I, there's nothing else I can do, but because it is my family. I'm investing in my family. It's an investment, and we got to do it. So, marriage is hard work. The number four thing a man must know is that don't give room for the devil, which means that the devil will always be looking for room in your marriage. How do we give room to the devil? When you start involving external parties. Now, every family have different ways of handling their lives. But to the glory of God, myself and my wife, we've never reported ourselves to anybody. Not, not that we don't have misunderstanding. Trust me. We, we usually have misunderstanding. But one way or the other, we, we found a way around it, you know, how to get misunderstanding settled. The only person that we have probably spoken to before is our mom. The reason is this, they are our mothers, it won't get out. When you start telling people outside the, the wrong thing your wife did, the wrong thing your husband did, you might not see them to tell them when your, when your spouse changes again. You might not see them. So stop selling yourself out for cheap. Because the same people you are telling, you don't know what they have in their mind towards you. They might even take that opportunity and destroy your family. So don't allow the devil. Sometimes you are the one also that should not be used by the devil. The devil uses anybody to accomplish his tax. The devil can use anyone to get you to get you angry. So don't let the devil use you to be angry at your wife and almost doing something you should not do. Don't be used by the devil. Learn to speak to each other. You know, even when challenges come, speak to each other in love find a way find a, a time that works well for your wife you know when you guys have issues don't talk when you're angry just keep quiet because there is nothing you want to say at the point you're angry that will add value so rather just keep quiet so don't give room for the devil trust me the devil is always coming there was something that myself and my wife uh, got to discover when we got married we normally fast on a day of the week, a day of the week, every week of that day. We discover that whenever we are being that fast, it's when we have some terrible misunderstanding that will cause issues. It happened over and over, and we discovered, and we have to take charge of our marriage. Like, no, devil, you cannot come in. This is not your place. You can't come in. You can't come in. And that was how we chased the devil out. And God has taught us over time to now. The things we will probably argue about then, or, or probably have misunderstanding about then, we don't have misunderstanding about it again because we are we, we have been able to work around it. God has given us so much grace. God has given us so much enablement to to be able to manage ourselves. So learn to talk to each other and don't talk when things are still very odd. Relax. That was for I always want to talk, so I have to learn to relax, to wait until the right time because there's a right time to talk and there's a right way to talk. That way you will achieve what you're looking for, and that's peace. So myself and my wife agree that all we need is peace in the house. So whatever we need, we need to do, you know, to make peace, peace reign. Sometimes I'm the one that is at fault. Guess what? My wife will, will come and meet me and say, "I forgive you." Sometimes she's one at fault. She say, "Tell me, I forgive you." We tell her, we tell her, we tell her say, "I forgive you." You know, it's just to re- relieve the tension going on around, so that the devil will not take opportunity. There are times, let me be honest with you. There are times we have gone to church, you know, unhappy because we 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 have a misunderstanding with ourselves. We have argued on the Sunday morning. Imagine, of all days, the devil is not joking around. So we are the one that we have to do our work by making sure that the devil doesn't have a room in our family. The last one is, you must be a role model as a husband. The things I tell my family to do, 
I try to do it first. So that I'm not I'm not kind of dictatorship. We just tell them what to do. The Bible said that and Jesus began to do and teach. Check the book of Acts chapter 1. And Jesus began to do and to teach. So Jesus is our role model. He first did what he taught so that we can emulate him. So our whole turn is here. We need to do those things that we are teaching. Teach those things we are doing. They must correlate. There must be a link. Whatever you want to see on your wife or your children, you must do. You must do. I'm going to stop there today. I want to encourage you as, as a husband. Try as much as possible. Work with your wife. You know, do all you can to achieve success. Have a goal to have a home, a marriage that the devil cannot touch. The devil will come around. The Bible says that surely they shall gather, but their garbage shall come to nothing. I pray today for every marriage that is having any issue right now. Every marriage is experiencing any form of storm. I speak peace to your marriage now in the name of Jesus. I speak peace to your marriage now in the name of Jesus. I say peace be still. Every marriage is at the edge of breaking up now in the name of Jesus. As you are listening to me, I decree in the mighty name of Jesus that the Lord Almighty will bestow his love upon that marriage and everything that has been destroyed will be repaired in the name of Jesus. The love of God is restored back into that home. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. So, once again, thank you for watching. You can share this video to bless someone out there and subscribe to my channel, like the video, drop your comment. If you have questions, be free. Talk to me on the comment section and I will reply you. Thank you so much. My name remains Ayodhya Janifu God bless you. Bye.